No longer taboo, the menopause has finally become a hot topic with what many women can go through hopefully becoming better understood. So I've had a bit of a rubbish day today with um, feeling quite anxious. I had a, quite a bad night's sleep last night. Hey, so I'm just between cases today at work. Um, just had a quite an embarrassing hot flush. I'm struggling with the light, I'm struggling to see. So it's 6am on Sunday morning and I'm wide awake. I've been perimenopausal for the last seven or so years. Definitely one of the most challenging symptoms I've found over the last few years has been the brain fog. I'm trying not to be too, um, too upset about it. Maybe though, the way that women's reproductive health plays out doesn't need to be inevitable. I've been to meet some scientists who are working on the idea of delaying menopause. At the Buck Institute for Aging in California, neuroscientist Jennifer Garrison studies the connection between the brain and the ovaries. Menopause is basically what happens when a woman's ovaries stop working. Essentially, it leads to a whole host of really dramatic health consequences. So ovaries are producing not just eggs for, for making babies, but also a whole host of really important hormones that are absolutely essential for overall health. When those beneficial hormones go away, what happens is um, a, a woman's risk of osteoporosis, heart disease, stroke, cognitive decline, um, all, all sorts of things, arthritis, depression, all of those risks go way up. If we don't address age at menopause or reproductive span in women, then essentially we're going to be making gender inequality worse and not better. And that's because, you know, female humans born today can expect to live on average about 100 years. And so what that means in practice is that soon women are going to be living more of their lives after menopause than before. Well, I can see the problem, but can menopause be delayed? We hope so. There are very few animal species that actually go through menopause. So what that means to me as a scientist is that it's probably not a biological imperative. Um, there's no benefit to it that I, know, I can see. <laughs> Combine the latest scientific understanding of menopause and the often symptomatic years running up to it, the perimenopause, with big data and things get really interesting. At Cambridge Biomedical Centre, genomicist Stasa Stankovic is trying to develop reliable menopause prediction tests. The access to these kind of data basically allow us to read the DNA of over 200,000 women who are menopausal. We can basically analyze and understand what are the differences in their DNA that actually determine at what age they will become menopausal. Some of the scientists I've spoken to have been focused more on health equality. It seems for you this is also about fertility. We actually capture both sides. It is really necessary for the tests in the clinic to have long-term predictive potential. And at the moment, they just tell you whether exactly. you are menopausal we, or not. But once you detect the problem of infertility, you're usually too late to do anything about it, such as go through IVF or cryopreservation. What our test might do is uh, the long-term predictive capability, which means that, that you will be able to plan your family and fertility journey extremely early on so that you don't end up in the situation of uh, unexpected infertility where you don't have a solution how to battle it. How close are we to tests that can do that reliably being available for anyone to use? We are at about 60% reliability, which means we lack around 20% more to enter the clinical practice. Experts can't agree on exactly how much genetics impact the exact time of menopause. Stasser estimates it to be around 60%, the rest being down to lifestyle or health, stress or medical issues. But particularly for those who do face it early, these tests could give some clarity. When I found out I was going through an early menopause, I think I was quite taken aback. 
I'd been um, on the oral contraceptive pill for quite a number of years and um, I, I recently had a relationship breakdown so I came off that and it was whilst I'd come off the pill that I started getting some hot flush symptoms um, and I hadn't really thought much of it at the time um, but after it was happening every day I went to the doctor to get some blood tests and everything kind of started to unravel slowly from there really. And it wasn't until I went through several diagnostic tests that I actually found that it was too late and I'd gone through the menopause and I wasn't then able to have children and I was infertile. So that was quite a lot to take on at the age of 31. Unless, of course, you could then take a drug to delay it. The imperative for someone like Siobhan may be greater, but research into developing therapeutics to do so is aimed at all women. Back in Cambridge, scientists are replicating in mice the signs that have been identified in human DNA. So to, to test the genes that we find in humans, we have to work with lab scientists. So you can see here Jerry working on some mouse cells validating our targets that we discovered in humans. Okay. So what we can do with this is first find out what, what the reason is, that the, the, or what the function of that protein is, so that then we can hopefully try to target that as a drug therapy. So, so far what we've done very well is, is categorise the kinds of variations that you find in large data into different groups. We know that some affect how many uh, eggs that a woman is born with, and we know that some affect the survival of the eggs uh, into adult life. And so that's already a big step forward in trying to understand mechanistically the different causes of uh, infertility. There are already startups working in this space. New York-based Aviva Therapeutics is currently trialing its menopause delay drug in animals. This being an engineered form of the anti-mullerian hormone, which plays a crucial role in regulating reproductive potential. What Oviva is developing is a therapeutic that essentially can be used to extend the ovarian reserve or the number of eggs that we have at any given point in time and using this as a means to extend ovarian function. Now, what's interesting about this is mechanistically, this is something you could take at any given point in your life and it would essentially be working as an anti-aging contraceptive and this therapeutic is something that you could start taking once you're in your 40s, whether you're finished having your family or perhaps you don't want children. It would be easily used at a later date closer to when you might enter menopause as a means to really stave that off. Health risks vary pre and post menopause. Exposing the body to hormones for longer can be associated with a higher risk of breast, ovarian or endometrial cancers. Whether this method of delay might impact that cancer risk in humans is unclear, though so far there's no evidence of this in animal studies. The likelihood of toxicity is quite low, but there's a lot that we need to better understand about the consequences of having that as a therapeutic, but then also extending the function of the ovaries for longer. So I think ideally we'd be able to take this therapeutic for a number of years, essentially for as long as we would want to forestall menopause. But have there been moody mice? The question of whether mood will be impacted is an interesting one. And I think we know that this is acting very early in the cycle to basically pause the eggs and follicles from entering that maturation pathway. And in doing so, you're actually creating a little a light suppression on the cycle of estrogen in particular. Um, progesterone, I don't think we've seen any direct impact on. But I think the critical thing here is we just need more data. Whilst initial signs are promising, Daisy's questions over extending women's hormonal lives are echoed by other experts. Before moving into health tech, Dr Stephanie Cuckoo was a gynaecologist, also researching women's cancers. What do you think of the concept of creating therapeutics to delay menopause? Delaying menopause might mean that you are exposing the body to hormones for longer than we are naturally used to. So perhaps we need to think about what the side effects of that could be. The trouble is that we need really long periods of testing to really see these side effects. So whilst initial preclinical studies might show that delaying the menopause is safe, I think long-term clinical studies in humans will be really important to guarantee the safety and efficacy of therapeutics to delay the menopause. We had better treatments on more access to HRT because HRT does work, um, then perhaps it wouldn't be such a, a, a topic of conversation that menopause should be delayed rather than just managed better. 
I definitely think if there was something um, along those lines, and that that would be really encouraging because it could, yeah, it could really, <laughs> really change some people's life. And I think mainly for me, it's been the fertility side that's had such a big impact because that's something that's now been taken away. So I think if I could have maybe had a bit more time with that, I, I, yeah, it would definitely be interesting. It's hard to look back and <laughs> and see, but I, I think it's very exciting that these things are they're possibly out there. And there is something else. There's been a big problem with underfunding in women's health. Do you think that menopause delay is actually the right place to be investing money? So we have to think about delaying menopause in the context of prioritising women's health needs. What is mission critical is investing in trials to find better therapeutics for the very deadly ovarian cancer that has um, sort of limited uh, treatment options the right way to invest or should we be really thinking about delaying menopause in the context of who it would be most beneficial to lay menopause for? Clearly women's experiences vary hugely and this is controversial but as we start to recognise the impact menopause has on countless women's health and well-being, the case for better or different safe treatment strengthens.